Okay, so on Friday, we worked on this boilerplate application for React. And when we left, there were still some broken pieces. So I just wanted to walk through one piece that I fixed over the weekend that um, Joel and Brandon were working on. So the issue that we had is that we needed to be able to compile less. And we had SAS in the project already. Now, in most of the projects we've worked on in the past, you pick either less or you pick SAS, but you don't get both. But with Webpack, we can actually do both. It's a pretty the call. So, if I pull up this, actually not that one, if I pull up styles.js, at first this is going to look kind of funny, but this is how Webpack works. It allows you to require not only JavaScript files, but CSS files. So in this case, I've created two oh, cool. Chris, files, a less and, a, and an SCSS file. And so the less file contains less related code. And this should be familiar from Friday because this is the code that Joel and Brandon had added to bring in material design. And then we have a SAS file here, which really doesn't have anything. Um, it used to have Font Awesome and Twitter Bootstrap in it, but I went ahead and removed those. So now it just has really just this body tag in it. And it's more or less here for illustration purposes for the time being. But because different libraries use different uh, CSS preprocessors, it's handy to be able to use whichever one you need based on that library. And in this case, now we can use both. So in styles.js, I just require both of those. And then in the webpack file, we tell it, if you find SCSS, here's a series of loaders. If you find just plain CSS, here's the series of loaders. If you find less, here's the series of loaders. Now, what these different loaders do are pre-process, handle auto-prefixing of the CSS styles. And it, so basically they handle all of the, the grunt work that you don't want to ever have to do by hand. So if I walk back up in the file just a little bit, you can see that my CSS loaders include CSS loader, which makes sense, and auto-prefix loader, which is the one that will add the browser-specific prefixes as needed. So if you need to add, for example, a web or a WebKit dash or Firefox dash, auto prefix will do all of that work for you. So now we can write cleaner CSS in our less or SAS files and not have to worry about all the browser specific dependencies. This guy will handle all of that for you. So then the next thing I do is I create a clone of the CSS loaders because we don't want to modify the original array. So if I as long as I do this slice zero, it's kind of a little bit of a hack, but it's a JavaScript trick that will make a copy of an array because we don't want to modify the original. Otherwise, we would use the SAS loader for our CSS files, which is bad. So this lets us set up CSS loaders and then less loaders. So depending on which file type it finds, it'll pipe it through each of those different loaders. So then down below, going back to the code we were looking at here, you can see that we have each of those, the CS SCSS, the CSS, and the less loaders. And then we also include this style loader. Now the style loader is required for this extract text plugin loader. Without, if I didn't do this, then you could still require the SCSS, the CSS, and the less files inside of your JavaScript files, but you would not get a CSS file output after you're done building. So that's what the extract text plugin does is it says, hey, while you're doing this and while you're building the JavaScript files, also please build a CSS file for me. And then name it the same as the original file, just put a dot CSS on the end of it. So now when this is built, if I go look in the build folder, I end up with a styles.js. It looks like this. And you could actually put this on your page as a JavaScript tag, and it would apply your CSS styles. It wouldn't actually execute any, well, it does execute JavaScript, it's just not any JavaScript that we had written. 
But for the sake of sanity, I also output this CSS file, which you can include in the output. So if I go over to, let's see here, find the index file. Right here, I output the CSS just as a normal style sheet. Um, like I said, we could also output it as a script. It doesn't matter either way. The result of this is that now we have our Google material design styles applied to the page. So even though this page still needs more styling, the default styling available for material design is now available to us and we can begin using that library.